Well, good morning and welcome to your Friday Five for Five. I'm excited to be joining you this morning. I'm Adam, the worship pastor here at First Baptist Church of the Islands. And this morning, I wanted to talk with you just for a few minutes about an old article that I had read back in, it's actually from 2016, and it's from pastor, author, and seminary professor, Dr. James Emery White. And it's called The Church's Oxygen. And what really got me thinking about this is I have had so many friends who are worship pastors, both here in Georgia and really across the country, that have had COVID. And when they got COVID, one of the biggest issues for them was their breathing, their oxygen levels. In fact, when I had COVID just uh, about a month ago, I remember uh, folks from the choir actually were worried about my oxygen. And one of the choir members even brought me a pulse ox uh, meter for me to use on my uh, on, on my fingers so we could monitor my oxygen levels. And um, someone brought me the little breathalyzer thing that you blow into to help you keep your, your breath. I'm sure I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know the name of it, but the little device that you use to blow into to measure your breath. And I, I even did breathing exercises that I had really not done since I was in, in school um, in voice lessons back in college and, and in seminary. So it was really interesting to see how oxygen was a huge factor in this. And in fact, some of those friends of mine who are worship pastors that are still struggling with COVID, even one of them several months after having COVID, he still has to wear an oxygen mask at times. It's amazing what a deprivation of oxygen can do to the body. In fact, have you ever been hiking in a really high altitude? And when you go hiking and you get above a certain altitude and your oxygen levels begin to decrease, you talk about feeling sick. It makes you feel sick. You get nauseous. You get a headache. You just feel like you can't go on. But when that oxygen is there, if they simply put an oxygen mask on you in those situations, it's amazing how quickly all of that subsides. All the sickness goes away and you begin to feel better. Well, what Dr. Emery, uh, or what Dr. White had asked is, what is the church's oxygen. What is the one thing in the church that if the church is deprived of, it's going to lead to sickness? And he says, that's an easy answer. It is unity. And in a lot of this series that Pastor Brooks is preaching through when people disagree, it made me think of this. And it made me think of this specific article about unity. Dr. White says that when there is relational unity in the church, when there is unity between the believers, when there is not disagreement openly between all the members of the church, there is health. But when there isn't, the very oxygen of the church needs, the, the very oxygen that our church needs to live becomes thin. You know, they're in, in, a, in a church that has little oxygen or little unity, in a church that's not unified, there's little sense of worship. Evangelism wanes, he says. He says, none, if, if any, ever are reached for Christ. Ministry becomes lifeless. Ministry is just programmatic. And discipleship rings hollow. All because unity is not there. Have you ever thought about how important unity is in the church? You know, I think it's no wonder that when Jesus prayed his priestly prayer, his great high priestly prayer, prayer before his crucifixion in John 13 through 17, he prayed for unity and love among those who would share his name. In other words, he knew that unity was going to be the very air they would need to breathe. And without it, they were going to grow ill and nothing would ever be accomplished in the world. So this morning, I want you to breathe deep. I want you to inhale. And I want you to think about unity within the church. And every time you breathe, every time you take a deep breath, I hope that it makes you think of being unified with the body of Christ. You know, we're never going to see everything eye to eye, but we can agree to be in one accord and to work together for the cause of Christ. We love you guys. I love working at a church that is unified. I love working at a church that knows what worship is. And I love working at a church that gets the fact that 
unity is the very air the church needs to breathe. We love you guys. We'll see you this coming Sunday morning, whether it's uh, on campus or online. We're excited to worship with you. We love you guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.